Traditional auto dealership franchises might work best, new study says. A new Oliver Wyman study commissioned by the National Automobile Dealers Association <laughs> believes uh-huh. the cost advantages of hybrid or direct-to-consumer auto distribution models have been overstated. Shocking news that the National Automobile <laughs> Dealers Association has commissioned a study that has found that car dealers are good. Yeah, you know, the, this is the same group that commissioned a study to say that that the FTC uh, cars regulations would be bad, you know. Um, so I don't want to say that there's a, in my opinion, I, I would suggest that perhaps there's a certain amount of prejudice built into the study prior to it taking place, where somebody might suggest to some company that's going to do the study, Man, this would work best if the conclusion were that, well, automobile dealerships are still the best way to sell cars in America. Um, Again, this is all in our opinion, but man, it is, you know, barren of gray matter. Water is wet. Shocker. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I find I find it yeah hard to believe that uh, the National Automobile Dealers Association would commission a study that would find that, well, the automobile dealers are still the best place to buy and sell cars. Which, to be clear, we we love dealers that operate fairly, that operate yes. transparently. But I, to be explicit, like we help thousands of people every single month buy cars. And as far as I know, to buy a new car, you still have to go through a dealer in most cases in the United States. So we're not anti-dealer by any stretch. But just like the fact that that the National Automobile Dealers Association came, Association came out with this and then said it's just ironic. Flaming Audi EV on dealership lift challenges firefighters. Firefighters were able to lower the electric vehicle from the lift and push it outside so the flames could be fully extinguished. This is scary stuff. It it is. And, you know, Brandon and I touched on this uh, last Friday on our Car Sense talk. And what's scary is that, yeah, you could have, there's a greater likelihood that a hybrid vehicle or a a straight gasoline engine vehicle could go up in flames before an EV would. Yep. Okay, percentage wise, the the highest likelihood of a vehicle catching fire is a hybrid, followed by gas, followed by an EV. The difference is that the EV burns so hot that water doesn't necessarily put out the fire. Okay, and in dealerships, typically dealerships today are built for the service department to have two garage doors, one at each end, as opposed to in the old days where every bay, every service bay had its own garage door. So if you're in a situation like this where an EV catches fire on the lift, there's only two exit points for that vehicle. First, you got to get the fire under control enough so that you can, A, try and get it off the lift before, before it ignites the entire facility, okay? Um, and the likelihood of your local fire department or your volunteer fire department having the having access to the chemicals it takes for these type of fires is probably pretty low. So there's a lot of work involved in trying to get one of these things extinguished. And it can, it can be, not only can it be catastrophic for the car, obviously, but in a situation like this, it could be catastrophic for the entire operation, the entire dealership. Um, they're going to have to, reconsider how it is they build service departments and the number of exit and entry points that they have for vehicles so that they can get them in and out quicker 
in the event that there's a uh, a situation like this. That's good scary. To, good to see Justice back with us. Hey, yep. Justice, hope you're doing well. I hope you enjoyed your vacation. Yep, it's not very likely for an EV to catch on fire, but when they do, it's bad. And that's, I think, what yeah. the story here definitely, definitely demonstrates. We've got another two more stories I want to pull up before we do from Matthew. Thank you, Matthew. Puzo. 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 <laughs> Peugeot. I'm probably getting offended at that point. So I'm going to stop. Thank you, Matthew. Appreciate the, yeah. the lesson here. EV fires. You know, I, can I say one thing? About, wow. Thank you for sharing that, Baron. Go yeah. for it, Ted. Yeah, that's true. Can I can I say one thing about Peugeot? Yeah, of course. I actually remember trading at Peugeot at Admiral Nissan in Pleasantville, New Jersey, many many years ago. I guess it was in the 70s mm -hmm. or the early 80s when when they were still selling Peugeots down here in, in the United States. Um, yeah, it, I mean, they were some lovely looking cars. Um, you know, I, I, and who doesn't want, who wouldn't want a quality French built car? Y your choices at that time were like Citron yeah. or Peugeot. Yeah. Let's keep moving, Pops. We've got here uh, from Automotive News, AM Radio for Every Vehicle Act passes panel vote. A bill mandates... All new passenger vehicles include devices for accessing AM broadcast stations and now pens house approvals. So this is in, in, you know, in spite of the push for everything to be a touch screen and software. Looks like we might have a, a mandate that you have to keep AM radios in cars. How do you feel about this? Uh, well, well, I'm just guessing this whole thing was pushed by, well, the AM, AM, radio, the AM radio lobby. <laughs> yeah, because are there who... Uh, I have. I can't remember the last time I listened to AM radio. I can hardly remember the. I can't remember the last time I listened to FM radio. I can't remember the last time I listened to a radio. Um, but but AM radio. It's like who? There's still stations. Who the hell listens to that? I think, um, I think you might be surprised that uh, I think a lot of people still listen to the radio. I think it's a safety well, thing. I think it's a safety Arthur thing. Mor Arthur Morgan does, and Andrew Long do. Um, so maybe I'm just out of touch. It's you know it 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 I I very well could be out of touch. Um, I think it's a safety I, thing. It's like a method of communication. Yeah, that is reliable. Making sure you yeah. have it in the car. Yes, my car has an, has AM radio availability and FM radio availability and satellite radio oh, availability. No, but like, that, that's not the point. The point is that the federal government, your federal government, is going to mandate that that can't go away. Yes, of course your vehicle has it, but they're going to potentially mandate that it can't go away. That's the point. No, I I, I get the point. No, I I I understand the, the point, and but you know, it's like really was that brought to us by the AM radio? Uh, uh, um, lobby one more to put on your radar pops gm to recall over four hundred and forty nine thousand pickup trucks suvs in the united states the trucks are being recalled for due to an operative low brake fluid warning so not a good one when there's anything brake related and a recall going on well and there you have it just 10 minutes earlier i said i don't understand why gm and, and chevrolet pickup trucks don't sell better than they do because they have less recalls and quality control issues than ford and then 10 minutes later <laughs> you pull up this article to make your father look like well an absolute horse's ass thank you thank you very much thank you gm um you know i needed that comeuppance obviously um so I apologize for my earlier statements. Ford, you just keep building pickup trucks that America wants and, and everybody else you keep trying to catch up.